Chapter Three of Our Little Jewish Cousin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Denise Nordell. Our Little Jewish Cousin by Mary Hazelton Blanchard Wade. Chapter Three. The Feast of the Passover. It was the first evening of the seven days set apart to celebrate the deliverance of the Jews from their bondage in Egypt and their safe passage to a new home of their own. Solomon and Esther were dressed in their Sabbath clothes. So were their father and mother. The house was trimmed as though for a wedding. "'Is the table ready?' Esther's mother asked the servant. "'Quite ready. Everything is in its place, I think,' was the answer. The children's father led the way, and the family gathered around the table. There were lettuce and cress, unleavened bread, wine, and a meat bone which was carefully covered with a fine cloth. Solomon and his father began to chant. They rocked themselves to and fro at the same time. This motion of their bodies was to express as well as possible the words of the psalm, All my bones shall praise thee. When the chant was finished, the master of the house cut a slice from a loaf of bread shaped like a crescent. These two pieces of bread, he said solemnly, are like the shores of the Red Sea, but now as I join them together again it seems as though we could see the waves sweeping over Pharaoh's host. He then took one half the loaf and, putting it in a napkin, tied it on Solomon's shoulders. There it remained till the ceremony was over. Everyone drank some wine and then another chant was sung. After that they ate some lettuce and jam and chanted again. Esther's father now took some bread, spread it with jam, wrapped it in lettuce, and wound cress around it. He gave some of it to each one to eat. This was done in memory of the ten plagues of Egypt. The service was not finished until every one had eaten eggs. This was a sign of mourning that their temple had been destroyed. Solomon and Esther understood the meaning of all that was done this evening. They had been carefully taught the history of the chosen people, as they liked to call themselves, but at this festival their father once more repeated many of the stories of the olden time. He said, We do not celebrate this festival exactly as our forefathers did. They always sacrificed a lamb. They were also careful to eat no leavened food for the whole seven days. We follow the rule about unleavened bread still, and we look upon the first and last days as holy. You must never do labor of any kind on these two days. Then he went on to tell the story of the first Passover, and how Pharaoh, as the ruler of Egypt was called, wished to keep the Hebrews in bondage. He was building two treasure cities, and he needed great numbers of workmen to make the bricks. He did not wish the Hebrews to join his enemies or leave the country. He was a stern ruler, and he made his slaves work very hard, yet they had many children. The Pharaoh did not like this. He feared they would become too powerful. So he ordered that every newborn boy among them should be killed. It happened at this time that a little boy was born in a family where there were already two children. This new baby was a boy and was given the name of Moses. The mother of the child was fearful lest he should be discovered and killed by the cruel Pharaoh. She hid him as best she could for three months. Then she thought, the danger grows greater every day. I must make some new plan to save him. She placed the baby in a little cradle or ark and carried him down to the shore of the river where she hid him in the reeds. She told her daughter Miriam to stay near her brother and watch over him. Then she went away. A little while after this, who should come but the noble princess, Pharaoh's daughter? She was going to bathe in the river. It was not long before she spied the smiling baby in the bulrushes. She was so pleased with the little fellow that she said, I will adopt the child. Then the little Miriam came to her side and told the princess she knew of a good nurse. In this way it came about that Moses' own mother was hired to take care of the baby. As he grew up in the king's palace, his mother told Moses all about himself and his people. He was very carefully taught, and soon showed that he was mighty in words and deeds. It happened one day that Moses saw one of the overseers cruelly beating an Israelite. He was so angry that he killed the overseer. Then he had to flee to save his own life from the wrath of Pharaoh. He went into the desert not far from the Red Sea, and there he stayed for forty years. He became a shepherd. Once, while he was tending his sheep, he saw a strange sight. It was a burning bush. That in itself was nothing to wonder at, but the strange part of it all was that the bush looked as though it were in flames, yet it did not really burn up. It was a sign from heaven. As Moses looked at the bush, he heard a voice. It cried, Take off your shoes, for you are standing on holy ground. 
he listened in wonder as he next received a command from god to seek the ruler of egypt who was now treating the people of israel with great cruelty he must give the pharaoh a message it was this that god commanded moses to lead the people of israel out of egypt and into the desert at first moses feared to do this but the lord caused some miracles to be performed before his eyes then he had faith and became brave enough to do as god commanded him he went with his brother aaron to the ruler of egypt he told him that he had received word from heaven ordering him to lead the people of israel out into the desert to take part in a feast the cruel pharaoh did not believe in god he was angry with moses and refused to let the people go moses now showed the power the lord had given him he lifted his rod and commanded ten plagues to come down on the land of egypt this was to punish the pharaoh and force him to free the israelites one by one the plagues fell upon the country the waters were changed to blood and great numbers of frogs appeared upon the land besides these creatures there were swarms of lice flies and other pests the people of egypt became sick the land was covered with darkness the pharaoh was frightened and promised to let the israelites leave his country then the darkness lifted and the plagues ceased but as soon as this happened the pharaoh broke his promise the troubles began again pharaoh made fresh promises only to break them again as soon as the plague stopped at last god sent an angel into egypt to kill all the firstborn of the people the israelites however were not to be harmed moses told them to smear their doorposts with the blood of a lamb the angel moved from house to house doing as the lord had directed but when he came to a doorpost marked with the blood of a lamb he passed it by and no one within was harmed esther's father told the story that evening as though the children had never heard it before yet they had listened to it every year since they could remember the blood of a lamb yes the people in olden time had good reason to sacrifice a lamb at the passover it was well named the passover in memory of the angels passing over the homes of the chosen people end of chapter three recording by denise nordell of modesto california